the most interesting fact of building a dugout canoe or any primitive technology, past technologies, is that it's not primitive. It's fairly logical, it's very intuitive. Here you've got a tree and I need to make a boat. Well, first of all, anybody with half a peanut in their shell would have observed that logs float and some logs float better than others. We know, especially from a logging, speaking in a logging state, why pine logs float. So they floated them all down a river. Native America, our ancestors globally recognize, hey, pine floats, and it's easy to work with being a softwood. So it was an intuitive choice to use a white pine for a dugout canoe. So the dugout was a hardy substitute for water travel. And it's an ancient vessel. This was likely the first vessel that humankind ever built was a dugout. People sailed to Australia 50,000 years ago in a dugout canoe. People explored the coastline of early North America with dugout canoes. You know, the oldest archeological evidence for dugouts 10,000 years ago in, in the Netherlands. But we find them all over North America, in Michigan, as well as the rest of the Eastern states, you know, in, in dating for several thousand years. So again, you couldn't just chop this tree down. You know, you could just peel it like you would a smaller tree. So they would burn it. They would girdle the tree and they would start a fire. And for burning and scraping out the char, chiseling out the char, you would eventually drop this tree. And it would be, you know, this is a great example of a good dugout canoe, but they would be bigger. You know, we have historic accounts of dugouts that seat at 50 or 60 paddlers, you know, three foot across, three foot deep. That's a huge tree, you know, gross tonnage you know, they could haul. Once you put this on the ground, you can't move it. So they would fall and drop this tree right where they were gonna build their canoe and right next to the river. And this was where it would spend its entire life. So through burning and chiseling, they would drop the tree. Then they would burn it at the length they would want to start carving. And then through a process of fire and scraping, you know, they would hollow out the inside. And it's really simple. Early historic accounts through experimentation, people working six to eight hours a day can burn and scrape, not chop, scraping the char out, building a fire in the interior of the log and scraping out that char. You can build a 20 foot canoe, dugout canoe, not quite as big as this in diameter, but big enough in about 17 days. Historic accounts from along the Chesapeake, along other waterways, witness people building big canoes, dugouts, Indians building them in two weeks average. But you have time, and all you have is time. <laughs> so I think that some tools that we have, adzes and celts we have in our archeological connections, we think of as chopping tools. I think they're scraping tools, because when you look at them, there's not the stress fracture from being chunk, chunk, chunk. Plus it would be ineffective. You'd be constantly rehafting constantly resharpening your tool you know and you spend more time doing that and like I said eyewitness accounts scraping with shell with wood you know, scrape 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 it out